want. Okay. Welcome everybody to the Vanita Extravaganza 2021, celebrating Fern Ridge entrepreneurship. We're so excited to partner today, Oregon Rain partnering with the city of Vanita and the Chamber of Commerce, as well as others. I'm your host today, Ariel Rubin. I'm the Lane County Venture Catalyst with Rain, And I would like to give a huge shout out to Janet, Bradley and Heather who all uh, partnered together to put this incredible uh, event on for all of you today. So big shout out to all of you. Thank you so much. Oregon Rain, we partner with communities such as Benita to catalyze entrepreneurial ecosystems, connect entrepreneurs to resources, including overlooked entrepreneurs, and contribute to the creation of prosperous economies. And we do that, we like to say we're building infrastructure for startups. So making sure that there's mentors, networking opportunities, workshops, physical assets, capital, news and media, local government support, and workforce, et cetera. And we can't do that alone. So I'm here to catalyze community. So please join in. We know that we're always stronger together. We'll, we'd love to hear your ideas, especially now it's important to stay connected and all are welcome. Just a reminder that this event is being recorded and we can post it after the fact for those of you that aren't able to make it or that would like to review the excellent speakers today. Um, just a bit of virtual etiquette, please remain muted unless you're actively speaking just so that there's not rustling background noise. Um, questions can be placed in the chat or you can use the raise hand feature. We have some incredible content, so please stay engaged and we'd love to hear your questions. And of course, just remember to be polite, supportive and positive. Um, this is a supportive community. Just a quick note about breakout sessions. Um, we actually have two two uh, different sessions that will have some breakout options and you'll be able to select your own um, choice. We have two different speakers for each session and I'll go through those in a few minutes, um, but you actually can choose your own. And if you're having trouble with that, you can just message Bradley directly in the chat or you can just put help, I need help in the chat and we'll make sure to place you. All right, I am really excited to introduce our keynote speaker today, Jill Nelson. She's the founder and former CEO of Ruby Receptionist. And she founded Ruby Receptionist in 2003, started off with four employees and quickly grew it to 630 employees and 10K customers. Um, one of Oregon's fastest growing companies actually for 12 consecutive years. Um, she's won numerous awards, as you can see, and she's currently an angel investor, and she sits on the Ruby Receptionist Board, as well as Thai Oregon and the Oregon Technology Board. She's now the executive partner, an executive partner at Elevate Capital Fund, too, um, and she's operating, she's the operating advisor at UpData Partners. Um, all right, with that, I'm going to hand it over to Jill Nelson. Well, hello everyone and Ariel, thank you so much for that really nice um, welcome. I'm gonna multitask here while I share my screen and it's really great to be with all of you fellow entrepreneurs today. Um, my favorite people um, are entrepreneurs. I, um, it, takes, it takes optimism and it takes endurance and positivity and so that also makes not just for success but but you know a fun group of people um let's see full we'll play there we go um so well you know i have i have 15 minutes with you today and then i'm leaving another five for questions so uh, save up your questions and pop them in the chat and 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 we'll get to it but um as ariel mentioned i am jill nelson the founder and former ceo of ruby receptionist which is actually now ruby.com um and retired in 2019 it was a really really fun ride and and as um ariel mentioned by the time I left, we had over 10,000 customers. We had crazy huge offices in all over um, three different locations in Portland. We had an off we have an office in Kansas City now, and have even um, even launched in another office in Arizona. So it was a wild ride, um, and I am here today to share a little bit of that story and. You know, as I think back, you know, like the early days of, you know, 
what it was like um, back when first starting out, those four employees, no big offices. Um, I really, really, you know, can relate, relate to all those things ahead, but also the excitement and enthusiasm for what it is that you have to offer the world. Um, I had been staying at home um, for a couple of years while my son was in grade school. And when he hit middle school, he did not enjoy me um, being in his life so much. And I uh, said, you know, I really need to do something with my life and, and um, I really need to, you know, get those entrepreneurial juices out there and, and put it to use. And I had this idea, I had this idea for what was now something very similar to a WeWork. It was an executive suite. It was a very, you know, formal, you rent out offices and you provide shared receptionist and shared secretarial. And I, and I knew something about that because I had, I had sold um, executive suites as a um, former business broker. And because I knew something about it, that was a really great idea. And so that's what I do. Um, however, um, right off the bat, obstacle in my way, um, I couldn't find anyone to rent out class A office space for me because, you know, I had A, money, and B, I had no business experience. Um, had, you know, a door shut from the very get go. But um, as us, Entrepreneurs know, you know, it's really about like working through things. And so came up with the idea, well, what can I do with the resources I have? And this is what this is what you're seeing here. This was everything but the office. It was the virtual piece. And so Ruby offered at the beginning a virtual telephone service, real receptionist transferring calls, you know, being super helpful. We got some software that we developed ourselves with a little help from some outsiders. We were off to the races. I invested everything I had. I had $17,000 from a 401k that I just completely cashed in. I actually got an SBA loan back in the day when you could get an SBA loan without additional cloud or other than a good business plan. And I invested it in that, um, I think you can see in the picture that thing on the wall, that was like everything. That was all the money went to this phone system that was on this one circuit that was also hooked to the coffee maker. So when the, um, oh, and a toaster too. So when the to toaster coffee maker was on and the toaster popped, the fuse would blow and our server with all our information and our phone system would actually crash. And it was really, really, you know, those were definitely the early days. Um, so when I think about like, here I am here talking to you all today, and perhaps you're even farther along than where I was back, back here in this, in this little office, you know, how did we get from here to 630 employees and offices, you know, in three different states. And I only have a little bit of time. I could talk about the employees, which some of you will have employees and some of you I know are manufacturers and that won't be as, you know, as big of a, of a thing. Um, but when I really, really think about what was it that got us here, it is really about the customer. It is know thy customer. In fact, you could say, that the customer, our customer, even redefined our business before we even got off the ground. Um, again, had this idea, I really wanted to help small businesses. I knew small businesses were our customer, um, but I didn't know much else about them other than they probably needed their phones answered and maybe some help now and then. Um, and, I, and I thought that you know by offering that to them, less than the price of a receptionist, but from a remote location, that would really be helpful to them. And they, you know, could pay less and, and not have to worry about it. That's what I thought. But right from the get-go, the customers, the few that we had started calling us and saying, oh my gosh, you guys are so friendly. You just want us a customer. Or they would call and they would say, oh my gosh, you have no idea how much stress you relieve from me because I care so much about the customer. And I know that you are always going to be kind to whoever it is on the other end of the line. And I can really focus on the work that I need to do. Um, so it was really, really our customer that helped us really understand what it was we were even doing for them. 
Um, and I think that was just like the most important thing to grasp was letting our customer really define what our service meant to them and where the value was. Um, and so, you know, so I think through all of this, um, I just think that the customer, listening to the customer and responding to the customer in the way that aligns with what it is you're offering is one of those key foundation pieces that you guys will talk about in, in various startup breakout sessions, you know, aligning with your customer product market fit, um, really identifying that customer. Um, but it, it goes deeper than that for us and at Ruby. And I want to share in the following slides a few things that we learned. Um, so when we were little and small in our little office, I was actually one of those receptionists and I got to talk to our customer every day. So I actually literally knew the customer. Um, we had like, you know, 20 of them. And so they were actually all practically friends, you know? Um, so I knew what they liked. I knew what they cared about. I knew, I knew their customers even. Um, but as we got bigger, and even, you know, we, we were a small business, so I think we really related to what the trials and tribulations of a small business owner was. But as we got bigger, we started hiring employees and we got to, you know, 100 employees, 150 employees. And all of a sudden, we had employees who had never worked for a small business before. And all of a sudden, we weren't experiencing the same issues that our customers were were, it, you know, were experiencing. And I wasn't getting to talk to all of our customers um, on a daily basis. So it took a really long time. And I would suggest to you perhaps do this earlier in your journey. But about 12 years into the business, we did our first ever customer survey survey to like, who are, who are you people, you know, because they are small businesses. And I don't know if you all know this, but there are something like 29 million small businesses in the United States. And a small business could mean a solo preneur, and it could mean a company, you know, doing tens and tens of millions of dollars in sales. They could be in manufacturing, they could be an attorney. So to say that a small business, or you know that your customers are small businesses and say you know your customer, it's really, really, I, I think that's, that's cheating. So we finally did a survey like, who are, you know, who are you people? Who are we helping? You know, we now have thousands of customers. Um, who are you? So we, you know, we learned, we learned that, hey, our small business customers are actually customers that have fewer than 10 employees. And that actually really helped us because we were, you know, okay, that helps. You know, back when we had 10 employees, every single solitary penny counted and every single solitary customer counted big time. Um, not that they didn't count later, but it was very different and everything was, you know, was make or break. It was a very exciting time, hearts and souls, but everybody were in the business. Um, it was just a different, different experience. It was very personal. So that helped us really understand, um, you know, who, who our customer is in more ways than just, you know, small business. Um, we were also surprised to learn that while, you know, most businesses have only, you know, we thought we might appeal to startups, um, but but what we found out is most of our customers had been in business for quite a long time. And then we kind of figured out um, by asking them where they were from a revenue perspective, because we felt that was really helpful to understand, you know, like what kind of budget, you know, when they pay their couple hundred dollars a month to Ruby, what what does that mean to them in terms of, you know, how how much of their overall expense are do we represent? So we learned that and that was all super helpful. It was great. Um, we also learned that, whoops, um, we also learned that um, about 40% of our customers are attorneys. Like we grew from just, hey, any small business to all of a sudden 40% of our customers are attorneys. Um, turns out attorneys, it's perfect product market fit. It wasn't, this wasn't like I went out and did a study and like which customers are the best and this is what happened. Um, so we knew that, you know, it was pretty obvious when every single phone call was, you know, we were talking, talking to an attorney. Um, but we also then learned like, well, who else, who else and why, you know, and we learned that financial professionals and IT professionals and, and pro mainly professionals in general, we learned who, who used us. We also learned 
who we weren't a good fit for. Um, and then we learned that contrary to the rest of the um, small business landscape, we were really close to parity in, in terms of gender. Um, they skewed older and they generally had a college degree. Um, so that was like, okay, great. Now we know who our customers are. We were big enough. We needed that information. Every marketing dollar took those things into consideration, but also how we provided our service. We were always trying to improve our service, always expanding. What is that next thing that they need? How do we stay relevant? Do people really need a receptionist or why do they need a receptionist if they're choosing to have one in this day of you know a voicemail um so we we got more curious and more curious by by learning about our customer and we went on to do more surveys and we learned actually we started asking them beyond just like you know who are you it's like we asked them well, you know why why do you use us how are you using us what are you doing when you're not using a preview receptionist and we learned further um, that, you know, our customers weren't just in a particular industry, but they tended to be a little bit more virtual. Um, many of them, by the time we did this survey, had dropped their, their traditional business line entirely. Um, but the most important thing we learned from our customer was that what they cared about most was growth and customer experience for their own customer. And so knowing this, we had the um, the the focus to say we're not just a receptionist service we are going to be that partner to you to help with those two things and in order to do that it's fine as a business owner to say you know this is what we are and this is what we stand for but when you have employees and you have leaders in between you and the employees, it takes more than just a decision to say, hey, these are our customers and this is what we do. Um, it takes really dedication, rededication, and just messaging constantly about what that most important thing is. So at Ruby, we actually went and we did an in our customer's shoes campaign to say like, hey, when you're providing service, you are not just answering the phone. You're not just doing your job. You are putting yourself in the shoes of our business owner customers, our small businesses and saying, how can we make them have a better day and more revenue for their, you know, for their, that was their number one issue. And how can we take care of their customer? And so um, that's a campaign. And that is something that is, really, you know, it's a transactional thing. It happens on a, on a temporary basis and you can do them over and over and over again. But what's really, really helpful and what helped us at Ruby was to drive that home in, in our mission statement. So we took what at the core essence, um, those two things were, which is about um, working to create real meaningful personal connections and made that our mission statement because we know when we do that, um, it is something that is meaningful to our employees, but we also know that it delivers an exceptional customer experience because we're not just answering the phone. We're taking a moment to have an opportunity to make somebody's day a little bit better. And by having that as our core mission, it really was a beautiful foundation to stay focused on the customer. Um, the second thing we did was to really empower the employees to be able to do that. You can say, hey, you know, focus on the customer. Hey, put your, you know, put yourself in the customer's shoes. But if you've never been an attorney or a business owner who's struggling to make rent or needs that next sale, you don't necessarily know what that means. And so training became a very, very important part. And then having systems that allowed Rubies to feel empowered to break outside of the norm and deliver an exceptional experience that might really make a difference in somebody's life um, was was encompassed in this Ruby service pyramid. It kind of works up, 
um, like, like a Maslow's hierarchy of need, where first we absolutely have to do what we say we're going to do. We have to have great technology, great infrastructure, be super reliable. But once we have that foundation down, we can take our own personalities and really, really step outside and go above and beyond and deliver an exceptional um, experience. And to wrap this all up, I want to tell a story of all of this in action. Um, knowing our customers, knowing that what they really need is, you know, a partner by them their side to help them out, to take care of their customer, and to help them win sales. And sometimes that means just helping them get through the day. I want to tell the story of one of our attorney clients down in. I believe he was in Arkansas and he um, was a criminal defense attorney working out of the local jail, um, helping, you know, some of the most disadvantaged populations have the right to, you know, the, the legal uh, services that they were entitled to. And one of our receptionists who had taken the training and had um, really, you know, worked through this um, customer and service uh, program got a call for this attorney. And apparently this attorney had purchased some chickens and the chickens were ready to be picked up. And of course, this receptionist who was from Portland, of course, she also had chickens in her backyard. Um, and so when she got off the phone, taking a message about, you know, his chickens were ready to be picked up, she sent a care package of a starter chicken set to help these chickens, you know, feel at home and sent on a, a, a nice little note along with it to this attorney. And this attorney on letterhead, embossed letterhead, wrote me a letter. Um, and really this letter encompassed everything we strove to do, which is when I opened your thoughtful gift, it made me feel that you were all more than just providers of a service, you are part of my team. That feeling of that I'm not doing this alone truly does help me do the work I need to do for the people who have come to me for help. And that really, that letter just, um, it was such a nice reflection. We got all kinds of thank yous all the time and all kinds of letters, but this particular one pretty much um, mirrored back our mission and everything that we intended to do and helped us really um, um, believe that we weren't just a reception service. We were out there helping small business owners be successful, whether it was getting a new customer or just being able to focus on the work that they need to do and have peace of mind and a little partner by their side to help their way and uh, help them on their way. Um, so, you know, looking back, um, lots of celebrations, lots of fun memories. Um, I don't think had we not sort of fallen in love and gotten really, really curious with the customer and let the customer guide us along our way, uh, not just providing whatever service it was best for them, but really communicating to us what it was that was the most important. Without that, I don't, know that I would be here today offering this this um, this talk to you. Um, so I hope that as you um, venture on your own entrepreneurial journey, that you get to have the, as amazing customers as we do and and get that same joy and 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 thrill of delivering on that customer promise. And I hope that I have left a few minutes for questions. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jill. That was super inspiring. If you would all like to put some questions in the chat or you could just totally unmute. It seems like we're oh, yeah. in a group. Any questions? Oh, you're getting some love in the chat, Jill. I am. Where's the chat? <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Chat. I have a question for Jill. Hey, Jill, it's Caroline. Hi, Caroline. Um, I love the story, the extra touch with the lawyer. I'm curious, did you, do you give, or when you were there, did you give your team a budget to do things like that, to do just that extra little thing to make a difference? Because I do find that that does go such a long way. It, it really does. And I, I have shocked people uh, right and left by saying there was no, there was no budget. And, and, and in fact, we had a prepaid Amazon account 
that customer that our employees were empowered to purchase whatever they wanted for any really any amount. Um, we just had to make sure that and that same customer hadn't been um, you know gifted or or something. But it but oftentimes. Um, our, we also just had stacks and stacks and stacks of note cards and really empowering our receptionists and encouraging them and providing the time to write a write a note of like, hey, it was so nice talking. It's great. We both like the Cubs or or you know whatever whatever that connection they they made. Um, I get it that the the budget thing is a little scary to say no budget, but I will tell you that by really both just focusing on the customer and really empowering those employees to say, hey, this is what's important. I, I mean, we really mean it. Um, and I just not once did did we ever come into, you know, an issue where it was like a receptionist went and, you know, I don't know, bought a car or something. I mean, obviously they wouldn't buy a car, but, um, but at, you know, somewhere in the 20, 20 to $40 range, um, but it, it came back to us tenfold. Um, Awesome. That's super inspiring, Jill. Yeah. Every time I buy something from Etsy and I get a little handwritten note, I just want to keep buying stuff from them because yeah. it's so sweet. Yeah. And I think like, you know, for those of you that aren't, you know, that may not be in a cut, you know, we literally sold customer service for a living. So being able to deliver great customer service to our customers was also showing them how we can also take care of their customers. Um, but for those of you who are in different um, industries, you might find that what great customer service to your customer doesn't mean nice note cards. It might mean really fast turnaround. It might mean really reliable product. Um, until you really get to know your customer, you what good customer service is, is not the same for everybody, you know, and maybe they don't ever want to talk on the phone. Maybe they only want to, you know, chat on online. Um, Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jill. I don't think we have any more time for questions, but if you have okay. more, you can put them in the chat. But let's just give Jill a huge virtual round of applause. Thank you so much, Jill. You're Thanks. amazing. Oh, it was a pleasure and best of luck to all of you. And I'm rooting for you. Yay. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Okay. I'm going to share my screen again and I'm going to talk about the rest of the agenda quickly. So we have some rapid fire pitches coming next, which I'm really excited for. Then we're going to have a raffle drawing. Um, so stay tuned. There's some great prizes. And then we'll have a breakout session number one with Robert Killen and John Greeley. Um, the first one is brand identity and then sustainability and business. And you can choose from the two of those topics. Then we have another raffle drawing. Um, then we have a treat where we actually get to hear from Commissioner Jay Boziewicz on our entrepreneurial scorecard, sort of talking about the health of the Vanita entrepreneurial ecosystem. Um, and then we have another breakout session with again, two options with Nathan Wood and Mitch Doherty, social media marketing, and then a Q&A on sort of how do you do all the stuff you don't have time for. <laughs> um, another raffle drawing, another round of rapid fire pitches from local entrepreneurs, yet another raffle drawing, closing remarks, remarks, and then some grand prizes. So, so excited. So our first round of pitches, Woo! we get to hear from Annie Molnar with the Emporium, Caitlin Menser with A Link to the Past, Nancy Willard, The Way of the Donkey, and John Tribole, and I think also Jess um, from Grateful Graphics. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and we're gonna hear from Annie first. Annie. Oh, let's see if I can, oh, there's a video. Okay, <laughs> hi everybody. Um, so my name is Annie and I am the founder of the Emporium, Vanita. After two pop-up locations, we're opening our third and permanent location in May. By definition, the Emporium is a retail store filled with items that you never knew you just had to have. We currently house the work of over 40 local area handmade makers and artists, all small businesses and entrepreneurs in a boutique style setup to sell their items. By partnering with our entrepreneurs, we're able to offer an aggressive marketing plan, a fully staffed location, including central checkout, professional merchandising and resources to grow their businesses. No more packing and unpacking and going from one show to another. Things are different here at the Emporium. We're a community of like-minded individuals working together on common goals. 
Follow and share our social pages. Contact us to be part of our artist community at the Emporium Vanita. We'll see you on opening day, May 1st. Thank you. Yeah, Annie. So good. Thank you. Thank you. And Caitlin, we'll hear from you next. Hello. My name is Caitlin Menser. I'm the owner of A Link to the Past. My business provides a space for people, especially middle or high schoolers, to hang out, have fun, play games, and have some refreshments. Many similar businesses choose one service to focus on, but in the rural town of Vanita, I feel it's very important to provide a variety of services under one roof. The hobby shop provides space for playing card and tabletop games. The arcade offers games for those that may be sitting out tournaments or even just to enjoy the nostalgia of old arcades. The refreshment area offers a variety of snacks and beverages so customers never even have to leave. Follow us on Facebook to follow our progress towards opening. And when we do, come on down, hang out and have a milkshake and stay out of trouble. Ooh, nice, Caitlin. That was fabulous. Thank you. You never even have to leave. Wow. <laughs> Nancy, you are next. Hi there. My name is Nancy. I'm the donkey lady. And I'd like to introduce you to Bella. Can you say hello, Bella? And Bella and I are going to take you into the magic donkey e -aw obstacle course. Donkey e -aw is donkey enabled empowerment and wisdom. This is a form of donkey therapy, but it's also just fun. Obstacles um, relate to the challenges that we face in life, and it's just fun to go around obstacles with a donkey companion. My um, strong focus is going to be on serving people, children and adults who have experienced trauma or have other challenges, um, or just anybody who wants to come and have fun. We're opening on May 1st. Um, my goal is to serve families with kids, single adults, um, people with developmental disabilities and their caretaker and group homes. Uh, like us on Facebook at The Way of the Donkey, and that's where most of the pictures are going to be. Um, my website is donkeyeaw.org. I just found out about the public benefit corporations this morning, um, and we're going to be applying for one of those. Long term, I would really love some of that recovery money to get into a facility um, where we can offer these services year round. Thanks much, and e we hope you have an e awesome day. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Donkey. <laughs> awesome, how fun! Great, we get to hear from John and Jess from Grateful Graphics next. Hi, my name is John Tribble, and along with my partner Jess, we own Grateful Graphics. We provide graphic design services, custom apparel printing, and promotional products such as banners, stickers, flags, signs, and more. Don't lose money going to an inexperienced shop. My 42 years in the industry allows my customers to save money by doing a project right the first time. And unlike our competition, we have the capability to print full color shirts with no minimum or maximum orders, as even um, and they can even have them made while they wait. A customer can walk into our store and leave several minutes later with their shirt. We also have an extensive lo product line of our own, including exclusive t-shirts, tie-dye, stickers, and more. Visit us at 87980 Territorial Road in Venita after May 1st or online at gratefulgraphics.com and let us help you get started on your project. Nice. Beautiful. Yay, thank you so much. It's so fun to hear from you. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, sharing my screen again and moving on. Thank you so much, you all. That was really fun, really exciting. Okay, we get to hear from Jana now from the city of Vanita with a raffle drawing. Ooh, all right, who's ready for some raffle prizes? <laughs> yeah. First off, I wanted just to do a quick shout out. I, I'm hoping everybody can hear me okay. Yes. Okay, great. 
So a quick shout out to, um, well, I wanted to draw attention to our bags, our goodies for those of us that signed up early. You've received quite a few things in your bags. Um, we're doing that. So thanks so much. A lot of those items in the bag were to showcase our local vendors on Shopfern Ridge. Uh -oh, going in and out a little bit, Jana. Maybe you can turn your video off. So we can and run gum. So check those. There we go. Perfect. Probably better. All right. Yep. Can you hear me now? Yes. Perfect. Great. All right. So uh, showcasing our local vendors on um, Shotfern Ridge. So thank you so much for everybody being able to be a part of that. We are excited to um, showcase you. So check that out. Check out shotfernridge.com. Um, I'll put the link in my um, in the chat in a little bit. But let's go ahead and move on to our first raffle drawing. So Ariel, can you send that? Can you put that um, up? This is also showcasing our shot for Ridge um, vendors. Oh, the slide again. Yes. Let me do that. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. The slide would be great. Thank you so much. Oh. So there we go. So we have Ada's mole sauce. And we have a dark a dot art kit from the craft. Um, we have dog tags from Indie Arts and a woven platter pottery from our lovely moon dance pottery. So I am excited to be able to give this away for to somebody here. You do have to be present to win. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share uh, my screen in order to show you our fun wheel of names to be able to be drawn. Can everybody see that? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, get ready, everybody. I'm going to spin it. This is the one that's going to win the Shot Fern Ridge prize. Brittany, Brittany, are you there? If you are, please unmute. Is Brittany, Brittany there? Maybe she's not. I think I you got to roll again, Jenna. Okay, then it's going to another person. Here we go. Ishbel Lane. Is Ishbel there? No? Okay. These are all the registrants that we had previously. So I'm excited that somebody on here is going to get one. We're gonna remove that name. Here we go, somebody for here. Nancy. Woohoo! Wonderful. Okay, so Nancy, I'm gonna connect with you um, after after this to be able to ship those to you. So congratulations. Thank you. Hopefully your donkeys <laughs> will enjoy too, Nancy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. This is an embarrassment oh. of donkeys. Nancy, we don't have time. I'm sorry. Bye. <laughs> sorry, Nancy. We're going to go ahead and move on. And thanks so much. Um, we are going to be having some more raffle prizes throughout the whole experience today. So thank you. Excellent. Okay, so now we have our first breakout session. And if you're not able to actually select, so actually in the Zoom controls down at the bottom, there should be a breakout section, right, where you can mute yourself for chat. There should be a breakout room tab that you can click on. And Bradley's going to um, put those two sessions for you shortly. Um, so we're really excited to have Robert Killen on brand identity and John Greeley on sustainability. And Robert Killen is the Lane County Small Business Development Center Director, the SBDC. Robert is a fifth generation Oregonian with a broad professional experience, including for-profit and non-profit management, consulting, and self-employment. He began his professional life as an artist, art director, and brand specialist. He spent another de decade in finance as a commercial lender and branch manager, helping businesses better understand and manage their resources. Robert is now the director of the Lane County SBDC where he and his team provide free and confidential consulting, low-cost training, and specialized services, including support in global trade, access to capital, and market research. 
And John Greeley is the CFO at Yogi Tea, which is actually really, I think it's right in Vanita or on the outskirts of Vanita, um, an East Coast, or sorry, East West Tea Company. And after John left the US Marine Corps, he received his bachelor's degree in accounting and started his career in finance. He has a broad range of experience, both with, within and beyond the food industry, and is now working with East West Tea Company. He is a resident of Vanita and is passionate about supporting rural areas and sustainability. With that, so good, love it. Okay, next we get to hear about the entrepreneurial scorecard, the ecosystem scorecard. And we'll get to hear from Caroline Cummings, the CEO and executive director of Oregon Rain, Lane County Commissioner Jay Bozievich, and Matthew Mitchell, the Vanita manager. So I'm actually going to hand it over. Um, I was going to read all of your bios, but out of deep respect and, and also time <laughs> shortage, I'm just going to show your lovely pictures and say thank you so much. And I'm going to hand it over to Caroline. That works. Thank you, Ariel. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here today. I know it's been a full day for a lot of people where we launched our, um, our Moneymaker Accelerator this morning, and many of you are participating in that to increase the financial literacy of your businesses. And um, there's the Shop Fern Ridge event going on and this event. And what I want to say is, wow, right? Like the fact that there's so many things happening is is pretty incredible especially in the in the middle of covid well hopefully the end of covid let's say that i'm going to start saying the end of covid <laughs> right so i'm excited to share um the ecosystem scorecard so what you're looking at on your screens here is when rain first gets invited into a community the first thing we do is and is with the stakeholders in the community is what we call a readiness assessment so we go through 10 elements of an entrepreneurial ecosystem to determine, is this town, is this city ready to actually commit to what's needed to support the entrepreneurial ecosystem? And Vanita was already doing such a great job when they had invited us in, we were an additive program to the great work that was already being done. And then on an annual basis, we, um, with our community stakeholders, we score the community on 16 different areas of building a thriving entrepreneurial ecosystem. And I'm not gonna read through all of these and I'm gonna hand it over to Commissioner Bozievich in a moment here, but I just wanna orient you with this card. So you can see that the items that are, get scored are on the left column here. You can see the last score column here. And by the way, the scores are a zero, which means you don't know. One means that you disagree or it's too early to tell in the ecosystem. Two means you somewhat agree, three means you fully agree, and then people can put a 0.5 in the middle. So the, the last score was 31 and a half and a maximum score is 48. And then the score that was done um, most recently, which I believe was January, yep, the end of January, and that total score is 35 and a half. So you can see that the ecosystem has gone up slightly and Commissioner Bozievich is gonna speak about that momentarily. And then there's a narrative that gets added um, about the ecosystem. There's some highlights and really cool things that have happened in the region over the last year, year and a half. And then there are some gaps that continue to need to be monitored and filled. And then what actions will be taken to fill those gaps. So this is a, a scorecard that all of the communities that invite us in get. And then what we do is once we determine where we need to move the needle, we find the right partners to help fill those gaps. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Commissioner Bozievich, who was at the last Vanita extravaganza and celebration, I can't believe two years ago, where he presented the very first scorecard and is gonna walk us through some of the areas that he's really interested in. So with that, Commissioner Bozievich, let me know when you want me to scroll. Sure, thank you, Carolyn. And as a typical engineer, the first thing I'm gonna do is correct your math, <laughs> which uh, the total score should be 35.0. Oh, did Ooh. we miscalculate the current score? <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, that's embarrassing. <laughs> okay, well, we will fix that. Yeah, but that's, that's the engineer side of me and I'm sure Matt <laughs> appreciates that also. Um, <laughs> we love it. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I, I am a numbers guy uh, and that, that's part of where I come from. And, and, but one of the things my resume doesn't show is I'm also an entrepreneur. Um, my wife and I own a small business together and I actually wrote the business plan that got the loan to purchase the, the business. So um, we've been through all this and understand how hard it is. And our only resource at the time was LCC's uh, small business center. Uh, my wife went through the class there um, and that was the, the, the background materials that helped us write our business plan. So this is an incredible thing that we have this, you know, help for entrepreneurs here in Fern Ridge area. Uh, and and in how much we've grown in 14 months. You know, that, that's, the, that's the time period between the two scorecards. And I'm gonna focus mostly on where we've, we've moved up in score. Uh, and that was, you know, Carolyn's suggestion. And, and I get to talk about the good things and I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to other people maybe to talk about where some of the gaps are a little bit, but some of them are pretty obvious that were there before. One of them's access to capital and, and something we need to continue to work on. But we've always had, you know, great buy-in from local governments. The fact that, you know, this is all being you know, helped out with the city of Veneta. You've got a county commissioner here. Um, and now we're seeing a, a lot of additional help coming into the community. Um, and that's the first place where we're starting to, to, to improve our score is people that have been there and done that are, are willing to help out. And I just attended the breakout section um, with John and you know what a great, breakout session on sustainability and the fact that we've got somebody with John's kind of experience that's willing to help out and mentor is just a great thing. And there's other people in this community that are starting to step forward. Um, and we're seeing that in some of the attendance in the meetings, but stepping up there, we're also starting to move uh, off of the not so good area on the quality of the mentors and all that. And obviously we're, we're um, you know, John's part of that. And we're also starting to see um, SCORE now involved, which is the retired uh, executives, I believe is, is I forget the, exactly what SCORE stands for, um, but it's great to get that past experience. Uh, you know, the local media is starting to cover the, the environment has also been a big thing. I got a chance to watch that um, PBS NewsHour story between uh, when I was invited to speak and that and this meeting and you know what a great thing to see the Emporium on a national news story <laughs> you know what, what an incredible uh, piece and and Carolyn's highlighting where that link is um, folks should go see that because I mean it's right there two of our our, our local entrepreneurs are featured and uh, another very interesting entrepreneur is, is featured from Florida uh, that's developing an app. So it's, it's a great story. And it's a great story about starting businesses during a recession. And, and particularly they're talking about starting during a pandemic, but that's when we purchased our business, 2009, <laughs> you know, right after the, the big crash. So don't be afraid, folks. It's a great time to start a business, believe it or not. Um, you know, space is cheaper, labor is more available, advertising prices are cheaper, all sorts of things that make it easier to start up a business. And then you, you catch the upswing as you get your business going. So um, great thing for people to do. Moving on down the list there, um, you know, whether, you know, we've improved on a couple other places, you know, both stepping forward to champion the ecosystem. And I just can't say enough about Annie and, and, the, and the Emporium and that whole um, idea and not having to move from show to show or, um, you know, various little events trying to, to market your, your wares. Uh, it, you know, I, I get that. Um, and, and I, I want to say also, I, I feel like I wish I was as prepared and as slick as our, our rapid fire pitches were. 
<laughs> and Annie's pitch for the Emporium and all that was great. Um, so you guys are just doing a, a great job there. And that's just sort of somebody that was willing to step forward and provide that environment. You know, that's why we've stepped up in that particular score. Um, so, you know, we've got some great physical assets growing in, in both you know, those areas um, due to that. Um, and then as we look at it, we're actually starting to get a little bit better with access to capital um, and arable brewing is, is showing that they're starting to be able to secure some of that. Um, and in the last place we made some really significant improvement is, is just in the service providers willing to engage. And really that's you know such an important thing, RAIN, RDI, uh, Foundry Collective, RARE, SBDC, um, we talked about SCORE, all these people that are willing to jump in there and, and help these folks um, be successful um, and, and be their own boss and, and really get something going in our community. So I'm going to step back a little bit because I, I want to leave time for everybody else and introduce uh, Matt Michael, the city manager for the city of Veneta who's been uh, involved in getting all this moving ahead, you know, everything from pop-up, uh, you know, booths and, and everything else that's helped support this and is, you know, the staffing of, of a lot of this. So Matt, I'm gonna turn it over to you, but I'm, I'm gonna remind people also that if you need support or want to support people, reach out to Ariel um, and, and let her know. So Matt, uh, take it away. Thank you, Commissioner Bozovich. It's uh, I appreciate you taking the time to be here and, and uh, gather us around uh, the accomplishments that have been collectively achieved here. Um, I know that when I came into this position a year ago, that as you learn in life, you stand on the shoulders of those that you know came ahead. And uh, Vanita has always had that. Um, attitude of, uh, to quote John in our breakout session, be yourself and try something new. Um, I think with the benefit, uniquely so, of leaning on the RARE program, um, I think uh, the prior city manager recognized that bringing creative uh, folks and accessing university resources was an opportunity for Vanita being so close to Eugene. And we took that to really ask questions and be creative. And so what we're doing right now, what we're living through, I, I believe is just the, you know, the, the harvest of those, uh, those seeds being planted. So, um, but in harvesting, even our roles today and going forward, um, what I've come to appreciate in working with this community is that we've all, come to realize that there, there is power in asking, you know, asking to be involved, asking for help. In doing so, you empower others. Um, and that's what I'm seeing. And that's the story that's getting shared about Vanita the is that there's this wonderful entrepreneur ecosystem that's creating itself organically. And it's because we're all asking, hey, how are we doing? And hey, is there something more you need? How can we help? And by doing so, we're empowering each other. And, and we're finding new uh, questions to ask and new challenges to overcome. So I really applaud um, this community, everyone on this call and everyone um, that helps uh, create that sense of, hey, come be creative and let's all uh, help each other. So I think, what the city does is both a convener and again, with the wonderful assistance of the team that we have here. And again, the rare program, Bradley helping us this year um, and Jana uh, being on board with us, just wonderful resources to help again, gather, share information, look for opportunities. Um, we look for opportunities to bring partners with the county um, and other resources to our entrepreneurs. And a lot of that is all feedback driven, you know, listening to 
how can we help you find that retail space? And yeah, I too applaud um, not just Annie, but all the entrepreneurs that have sort of recognized we're in this together and we help each other find that retail space that we've been looking for for years and that Vanita continues to, to really work at that question and will continue to work on that question. But the fact that um, that willpower, that tenacity and that togetherness um, is making uh, the Emporium of Vanita happen is, is a, I think, a testament um, to the work being done. So um, I think for the city going forward, we are going to continue to reach out to our entrepreneurs, find out what you need, um, how we can help you. Um, uh, I think most of you know Jana is actually going to be uh, taking a new position, helping with the assisted living center in Eugene. So I wish her all the best. I think she's really following her heart and her passion of helping people, which a lot of you have experienced. So a fond farewell to Jana. Um, but I think going forward, the city will just reload. We'll, we'll find that next person that can really help all our entrepreneurs and our businesses um, grow and be unique. Um, and again, uh, Help us be Vanita and have, a, have some fun uh, learning how to make that happen uniquely here. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Caroline, Commissioner, and also Matt. We really appreciate all of you, all the work you do for Vanita and beyond. Awesome. So now we're going to do a raffle, and then we'll hear from the second round of breakout speakers. So Jana, let me share my screen so you can talk about this next raffle. Perfect. And I realized that some folks have given me feedback that they weren't able to see the wheel spin. I promise on my end, it is spinning and I'm not just picking people. Um, but I do want to go ahead and send in the, the chat. Um, Shopfernridge.com is that online marketplace that many of you on the call um, are already on. That was where all of the gifts and raffles from last time um, were. And then there's another link in there for Shop Vanita, which is a digital gift card program. And um, we are wanting to showcase the local community to be able to shop locally. We will be running specials um, in the near future because we did get a sponsor for this. But um, in the meantime, on the raffle prizes, it does say a $50 Shop Vanita gift card. We're going to up, up the ante a little bit, and it's actually a $100 Shop Vanita gift card. So get excited wow. about that. Yeah, Woo. so the link is in the chat if you are interested in purchasing these later, if you don't win. But let's go ahead and, um, and spin another one. So let me go ahead and get this open again. And hopefully we'll be able to see it a little bit more. Must be present to win for this $100 Shop Vanita gift card. Here we go. We know it's spinning, Jenna. We trust you. <laughs> Is it working for everybody or no? Yeah, yeah. All right, Thomas, are you there? Thomas. Hello there. Yay, Thomas. All right. We're excited that you won. I'm going to contact you uh, to get your contact information um, separately in the chat, but congratulations. Thank you very much. So many great items on there. Get ready to shop. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Back to you, Ariel. Okay. Here we go. I am excited to announce the next breakout session. Um, we have Nathan Woods from RunGum, and this session is about e-commerce and marketing. And then we have Mitch Doherty, a Q&A, which is how to do the things you do not have time for. <laughs> we love this. So both topics are going to be really exciting and interesting. Make sure to choose whichever one you like. I'm going to do some quick intros. Nathan Woods, the COO 
and Chief of Stuff at Rengum. Nathan Woods is the COO, aka Chief of Stuff, Stuff at Rengum, a Eugene-based brand that makes gum with benefits to help people run the day. Nathan is employee number one for the six-year-old company and has seen the company go from its very first sale on the website in October 2014 to launching nationwide in Target and Walmart. When he isn't leading day-to-day -day operations for Rengum, Nathan focuses his attention on their direct-to-consumer and digital marketing efforts. And Mitch Doherty is the co-founder and director of Built Oregon. And many of you may have seen the Built Oregon um, shop, which is incredible. And a lot of you may have your products listed there. So Mitch Doherty is co-founder and director of Built Oregon, a not-for-profit focused on building an inclusive and empathic Oregon consumer products ecosystem that values trust relationships and the Oregonians behind the companies, not just the revenue generated, capital raised or bottom line efficiency. He was formerly a co-founder and partner at Morgan, um, Morange Design. Did I say that right? Morange Design? <laughs> you did. Great. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing my screen back. Hello. So nice to see you from the spatial void. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Awesome. I think we're all back. That's great. So, um, Dana, I'm, I switched things around a little bit. I want to do the pitches next, and then we'll just mush all of the next raffles into one. Okay, so we have pitches. Woohoo! Pitches, 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 pitches. Okay, the next round of entrepreneurial pitches will be, drum roll, Ellen Stump with Nana's Kitchen Confections. Reva Harding with Grateful Grooming, and Helen Oldfield with Zigzag Bag. Okay, so Ellen, Reva, and then Helen. Let's hear it. Hi, my name is Ellen Stump, and I am the CEO and founder of Nana's Kitchen Confections. I began as an extension of the Emporium 2.0 Baking Homemade Breads and Sweets. I have food industry background as I was a restaurant owner in rural Condon. Uh, Nana's Kitchen was a 32 seat uh, cafe there uh, prior to relocating to Western Oregon in 2015. What makes Nana's Kitchen Confections stand out from the competition is the care and love that we put into each product we deliver, as well as our ability to seek out unique and fun packaging for all our products like this one that just arrived. If you can't, probably can't see it. You got to put it closer, little, closer to the video, I think might work. Oh, it's, yeah. I don't know, put it back here. <laughs> anyway, oh, well. they're, they're little cupcake, um, bacon, bacon the cup, uh, neat. So our goal is to get to know our customers and make them feel that we are baking for them personally. Look for me this coming May at my new location in Benita alongside Emporium 3.0, as well as the downtown farmer's market on Saturdays. Also, you can follow me on facebook.com slash Nana's Kitchen Confections and send me a message with what you'd love for us to bake for you. Nice. That was a solid call to action, Ellen. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay, let's hear from Riva. Hello. I am Reva Harding. Oh, I'm sorry. There's the dog. That makes it even more personal. I love it. <laughs> I'm the owner of Grateful Grooming in Benita. My company provides quality and affordable pet care and grooming for local pet owners of Benita and Greater Lane County. My business is grooming dogs and cats. I've groomed rabbits and coming soon farm animals. I'm branching out and after a few more training sessions, we'll be able to satisfy the grooming needs of your sheep, horses, and even donkeys. Grateful Grooming allows pet owners to focus more on quality time with their animals and worry less about grooming and hygienic needs. Unlike most corporate or low quality grooming establishments, I provide care and styling for your pet at a price you can afford, as well as house calls, grooming, walking, and sitting if you or your fur baby isn't able to come visit me. With these services tailored to fit each client's individual needs comes peace of mind knowing your fur baby is my top priority in and out of the salon. Call today to schedule your pet's special spa day. 
I would also like to add that I currently subcontract out of a shop in Vanita, but I will be um, located at 88082 Territorial Road um, in mid-May. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Reva. That was excellent. Okay, last but not least, we have Helen, zigzag bag. Oh, you're on mute, Helen. <laughs> Hello there, my name is Helen Oldfield and I am the founder of Zigzag Bag. My company designs and creates whimsical carrying solutions for people with only two hands, allowing them to both transport and text at the same time. We like to think outside the box so that you can get more inside the bag. Unlike mass produced items, every bag we offer is individually handcrafted and therefore unique. Both practical and eye-catching, our products will streamline and complement your busy lifestyle. Carrying stuff becomes fun when you are loaded with bags of confidence, of personality. Uh, so follow us on Facebook or Instagram and check out our products at the Emporium in Veneta or online at shopfernridge.com. We invite you to brighten your load and carry on. What a finale. Amazing. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So fun to hear from all of you incredible local businesses. We love you guys. Thank you so much. Okay, so we have some raffles to close up and then a bit of what's next. And we're getting close to the top of the hour. So Jana, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Maybe we can just talk through all three of these and then I'll let you share your screen. Okay. All right, can you hear me? Yes. Nope. No. All right. So great. Thank you. We are going to be giving away two winery gift cards, um, one for each raffle prize coming up. So the first one is a $50 gift card to Sarver Winery. Um, I love this place. I've been there. Um, and who doesn't love some wine? So let's support our local entrepreneurs with Sarver Winery. Um, and then the next one, if you don't mind to go to the next slide, Ariel. Sure. will be another winery that is local Lavelle Vineyards. It is wonderful as well. Very cute and um, very close to El in Elmira. Um, so we're excited to be able to, um, to be able to give them. A so this is another $50 gift card. And then um, do you want me to talk about the grand prize one then too? Sure. I love it. <laughs> Perfect. All right, let's talk about that too, so we can get our wheels going. So the last one in our grand prize is if everybody I know we've been talking about social media and everybody needs a little help on that if you're anything like me. So Canva Pro has um, a lot of different capabilities that you will be able to access if you win this prize. This is a year subscription to Canva Pro. So that is going to be our grand prize finale. And we will also have one specifically for those that did pitches. So um, you, if you entered to be able to pitch today, and thank you so much for being able to do so, you guys have your own little wheel to spin for only those that, are, that did the pitches for a grand prize for Canva Pro. All right. So with that, Let's go ahead back. I will screen share for our wheel to get going. Okay, this one is going to be for Sarver Winery. Get excited, everybody. $50 to Sarver Winery. Let's see some, let's hear some noise and see some hands. Woo, here we go. It's spinning. We believe it. <laughs> so All <weird>. right. <laughs> Sorry. Stephen Fisher, are you there? Nope. All right. We're removing and going to our next person. Can 
Karen Landy, you are the new owner of a $50 gift card to Sarber Winery. Congratulations, Karen. Nice. Wonderful. Okay, we will do another spin for our next raffle for Lavelle Vineyards. So let's get excited about that. P.S. Who can who can see it spinning? Nobody. Is everybody able to or no? It's like skipping a little bit. So we we get the okay. scent. <laughs> well, thank you all for um, amusing me for being able to do this. So let's go ahead and spin it one more time. Lavelle fifty dollar gift card. John. Oh, nice. Grateful graphics. And Grateful for the graphics. Prize. John and Jess, you guys have a date night now at Lavelle Vineyards. Congratulations. <laughs> and for our grand prize, so the one year Canva Pro subscription is going to go to. Drum roll. Do we have Damas in the house? Is that how you pronounce it? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, think so either. <laughs> Once All right. again. Speak up. It, okay, we're, we're going to spin it again. Good suspense. That's what it's there for. <laughs> Heather, I like your like, drum roll and you're going for it. That's nice. <laughs> okay, Mary. Mary, are you there? Mary Solo. Solo. Mary? Yes, hi, I'm here. Yay! Great. Mary, you won! Yay! You won a Canva prize for a year for Canva Pro. And um, great. So I'm going to go ahead and get the other, the other wheel going. So I'm going to stop sharing this. So um, I'm going to put those that pitched into a new one awesome. and then we will we will roll for that one good and um mary and anyone else who wins the next canva if you want help learning how to use the pro version just let me know because there's a lot of really cool features so yeah it's a really good prize i love it yay okay Back to it. So these are all the folks that were so generous with their time and were able to pitch today. We've got Helen, John, Caitlin, Annie, Ellen, Nancy, and Reva. Thanks so much for your time today and for being brave and pitching your business. So this again is for a Canva Pro year subscription. So let's get it going. Drum roll, John! Whoa! John and Jess, congratulations, congratulations. I'm gonna go we out and get a Powerball ticket. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have luck right now, so if you can go buy a Powerball ticket, I would do so. <laughs> I always, I always like getting lucky. What is the camera? <laughs> 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 awesome. Wow, you guys. Well, thank you all so much. That is the end of our prizes this, this afternoon. Um, I will be contacting you through the chat if I don't already have your contact information. So thank you so, so much for at least entertaining me while I was spinning the wheel and hopefully half of you could see that. And <laughs> we I like appreciate you guys working with us. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jana. What amazing prizes. And some of those prizes were some of your businesses. So thank you all. That's wonderful. Okay. Just a last few slides. I want to talk about what's next. We have some exciting things coming up. So of course, there's always free re resources. You can email me and I often send out other community partners as well, like SBDC's events. Um, there's also ongoing weekly mentorship. Please let me know. Um, tomorrow, 9 a.m., please join us. Christina Scott is one of my favorite uh, designers. She actually worked on a previous startup I was a part of, um, but it's at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, how to craft a successful brand. Please join in. Um, and then I'm partnering with Micah Elkonen from Eugene's Table to put on a five-part food basics, food business basics series. Um, the first one is food trucks. The second one is restaurants. 
third, consumer products, fourth, agriculture slash farming, and fifth, beer, wine, and spirits. And those are all at 5.30 p.m. every single Thursday night of April. So please join in. Those will be really, really awesome. With that, I have to say that concludes our incredible Vanita Extravaganza. A huge thank you to all of you for participating, our amazing speakers, our fabulous pitchers, and all of you who helped organize and coordinate. And a big shout out to you. This is in celebration of the entrepreneurial ecosystem. So thank you all so much, and we will see you soon.